This LOS is describe and calculate the flat price, accrued interest, and the full price of a bond. Prices and yields, conventions for quotes and calculations. So now we're going to be looking at the flat price, accrued interest, and the full price. Okay. So when a bond is between coupon payment dates, its price has two parts. One is the flat price and two is the accrued interest. The sum of the parts is the full price. Okay, that shouldn't be too difficult to understand. Uh, when you're between coupon payment dates, you've got the flat price plus accrued interest. That gives you the full price, which is also called the invoice or dirty price. Okay, so you need to be a little bit careful, though, just with some of the terminology. So the um, present value of the full price equals the present value of the flat price plus the accrued interest. So the flat price which is the full price minus, you can, do the, you can do the algebra here, the flat price, which is the full price minus the accrued interest, is also called the quoted or clean price, okay? So the flat price is usually quoted by bond dealers. If a trade takes place, the accrued interest is added to the flat price to obtain the full price paid to the buyer and received by the seller, seller on the settlement date. The settlement date is when the bond buyer makes the cash payment and the seller delivers the security. Now this is important here. The reason for using the flat price for quotation is to avoid misleading investors about the market price trend for the bond. If the full price were to be quoted by dealers, investors would see the price rise day after day even if the yield to maturity did not change. That is because the amount of accrued interest increases each day. Then after the coupon payment is made, the quoted price would drop dramatically. Using the flat price for quotation avoids that misrepresentation. It is the flat price that is pulled to par along the constant uh, yield price trajectory. And that's why in the last LOS I brought back the uh, example from the accounting where we looked at the bond that was issued at a premium and pulled down uh, to par, okay? It's the flat price that is being pulled to par along the constant yield price trajectory. So a quick practice question to check our understanding. Bond dealers most often quote the A, flat price, B, full price, or C, full price plus accrued interest. Okay, the correct answer is A, bond deal dealers usually quote the flat price. So remember, the full price equals the flat, flat plus the accrued interest, and the flat price equals the full minus the accrued interest. So you just need to remember that. So when a trade takes place, the accrued interest is added to the flat price, uh, added to the flat price to obtain the full price paid by the buyer and received by the seller. And so this just goes through the uh, explanation that we had on the previous slide. Uh, that should be an easy question. Again, this is the important formula that you need to remember. The present value of the full price equals the flat plus the accrued interest. So the flat price is the one that we um, quote. It's the one that follows the pull to par uh, price yield trajectory. And the present value of the flat price equals the present value of the full price minus the accrued interest. Prices and yields, conventions for quotes and calculations. So we're gonna work through an example here where we end up calculating the flat price um, so let's work through it, this example. So it is a 6% German corporate bond is priced for settlement on the 18th of June, 2015. The bond makes semi-annual coupon payments on the 19th of March and the 19th of September each year and matures on the 19th of September, 2026. The corporate bond uses the 30 over 360 day count convention for accrued interest, okay, that's important. So we, we're gonna calculate the full price, the accrued interest, and the flat price per Euro 100 of par value for the stated annual yields to maturity, 5.8% annually, or 2.9% semi-annually. So we've got the steps here. Step number one, you need to calculate N, okay? So that's 2026 minus 2015, 11 years times two, uh, 22 plus the one, so N equals 23 for the number of uh, periods, okay? 
Step number two is we're going to calculate the price of the bond at the beginning of the period. Okay, so that's where we do that here. We calculate the price at the bond at the beginning of the period. So it's simply using the time value of money on the calculator. So we're going to have PY equals 2, semi-annual. We're going to have 23N, 5.8 IY, 3 payment because it's 6% but semi-annually. So 6 divided by 2, 100 future value. And it's going to compute the present value 101.66159. So if we just bring up the calculator very quickly, second PY, check that it's yes. And uh, that was 23N and 5.8IY. And that was 3 on the payment, 100 on the future value. And we're going to compute the present value, 101.661589. So we've got it. Okay, that's fine. All right, so now, uh, but we need to calculate. So step number two, uh, Okay, step number two, we've calculated the price of the bond. Step number three, we need to calculate the full price of the bond, okay? So we need to read here, given the 330 over 360 day count convention, there are 89 days between the last coupon on the 19th of March and the settlement on the 18th of June, 2015. And that's 11 days between uh, 19th of March and the 30th of March plus 60 days for the full months of April, May plus 18 days in June, okay? So therefore, the fraction of the coupon period that has gone by is assumed to be 89 days divided by uh, 180, okay? So step number three to calculate the full price, we're gonna take that price that we calculated, that was fairly easy, but we're gonna multiply by 1.029, that's the semi-annual, to, to the power of 89 over 180, and we're gonna get 103, dot 10877 so that's the full price remember so remember the full price equals the flat price plus the accrued interest and the flat price is going to be the full price minus the accrued interest so what do we need to do next is we need to calculate the accrued interest and that's just 89 over 180 times the 3 the coupon payment we get 1.48333 so the flat price is the full price minus the accrued interest so that's our 103.10877 minus 1.48333, and we get our flat price of 101.62544. Okay, we're going to finish this LOS with two practice questions. I called it part A and part B because part A, we calculate the full price, and part B, we're going to calculate the flat price, okay? So this is good practice. So bond G, described in the ex exhibit below, is sold for settlement on the 16th of June, 2014. The annual coupon is 5%. Coupon frequency is semi-annual. Interest payment dates are the 10th of April and 10th of October. The maturity date is the 10th of October, 2016. The day count convention is the 30 over 360 for accrued interest, and the annual yield to maturity is 4%. So the full price that bond G will settle at on 16th of June, 2014, is closest to A, 102.36, B, 103.10, or C, 103.65. Okay, you're gonna see that with a bit of practice, these questions aren't too difficult. The first thing that we need to do is calculate the flat price of the bond, and that's just our simple um, time value of money calculation on the price which is fairly easy now the issue is is getting your n right you know and so here it's, it's normally I'm going to draw a, a little bit of a timeline you see that it's maturing in 2016 there's two coupon payments there uh, 2015 there's going to be two coupon payments but we're in 2014 you can see it's for settlement in June which is after April but it's before October so you know there's one here in October so actually, I don't think getting the N is all that difficult. N equals is, is going to equal 5, okay? Because you can see at the beginning of the coupon period on 10th of April, there are two and a half years uh, semi-annual periods uh, to maturity. These f five semi-annual periods occur on 10th of October, 2014. 
10th of April 2015, 10th of October 2015, 10th of April 2016, and 10th of October 2016. Again, that's in words what I've just written on a quick little uh, timeline, okay? So I don't think getting your N is difficult. So if we bring up the calculator then, we're just going to make sure that we're second PY, we're set to 2. Yes, that's right. So it's going to be 5N. Don't forget we're going to use the uh, annual yield to maturity. We're going to use a 4 as our IY. And the payment, it's a semi-annual, 5%. So it's 2.5 is our payment. And of course, our 100 is our future value. So we're going to compute our present value and get the price, 102.356, okay? So, uh, you know, if you, if you calculate that, you know A is wrong automatically because that's just the flat price. So you should be able to troubleshoot that, okay? But now you got to add the accrued interest, okay? So remember, we've calculated the flat price, but now we need to add the accrued interest. So here's the formula. I, it wasn't so clear, perhaps, in the previous slide, uh, writing out the algebra. I'll, I'll do it here a little bit more clearly. It's 1 plus R to the T over T. So you just have to, again, make sure that you're getting the right interest rate. It's not the coupon rate. It's the yield to maturity rate, and it's semi-annual because we're doing uh, 30 over 360. Uh, so we're going to change that to, um, you know, over 180. And you can see that um, we had to calculate the number of days. So what we need to do then is calculate the number of days as well. So you can see from the last uh, coupon payment, which was the 10th of April until the 16th of June. So the 10th of April to the end of April is going to be 20 days. Then May is going to be 31 days. And then in June, we've got... Um, 15 days, so that's uh, 66 days, okay? Now, if you're off by uh, uh, one day, I think you're gonna still going to round to the same thing. So then what we're going to do is we're going to do the um, flat price, 102.36, plus 1.02 to the power of 66 over 180, okay? So let's just bring up the calculator, and we'll do 66 divided by 180, and that's going to give us 0.366666, okay? So I'm just going to write that down, 0.36666. So then I'm going to bring up my calculator. I'm going to do 1.02 y to the x, 0.36666, okay? And we're going to multiply that by 102.36, and we've got 103.10. Okay, so the correct answer is B. All right, so not too it's not too difficult. Uh, let's see if I got my days a little bit wrong. You know, uh, 67 days, for example, or 65. It's not going to make much of a difference. If I did, uh, say, 65 days divided by um, 180, it's going to give me 0 0.36111. I'm still going to be closest to the 103. Point one zero. So now we're moving into part B. And uh, part B is for bond G described in the exhibit below. So it's the same data, okay? But now we're going to calculate the flat price for bond G on the settlement date of 16th of June. It's closest to A, 102.18, B, 103.10, or C, 104.12, okay? Now I just want to show you something. Okay, so recall we calculated this price of 102.356, but that was for the price as at the 10th of April 2014. This is asking for the flat price on the 16th of June 2014. So remember, we can see that this is at a premium and it's going to be pulled down to par. So the price is going to be less than 102.356. So in fact, uh, you know, without doing any math at all, um, you know, if this was a two-part question, let's say this was an item set in level two or even a two-part question, uh, you would know that the correct answer has to be A because the price is going to be uh, April is, uh, is before June. Uh, June is after April. The price is being pulled down to par. The price has to be lower than your flat price that you calculated for the 10th of April, okay? But anyhow, let's go on to the next slide and, and uh, review some of the algebra and the calculations. So we'll start with that the um, 
the uh, full price equals the flat price plus the accrued interest. So the flat price equals the full price minus the accrued interest. So we calculated the flat price at 103.10. That was uh, from the previous. And we have to subtract the accrued interest. How do we do the accrued interest? It's T over T times the payment. So you can see the payment is uh, 2.5 because it's semi-annually, the five divided by two. And we're just gonna multiply that by 66 over 180. So we get the accrued interest is 0.92. So the, uh, the flat price is the 103.10, the full price that we calculated, minus the crude interest, 102.18. So as I said, uh, we had calculated the uh, flat price as of April. We know it's going to be pulled down to par, so A had to be right. Uh, nevertheless, we know that uh, the flat price is the full price minus the crude interest. We did that little bit of accrued interest with the calculation here. Okay, And that's the last slide for this LOS. Thank you.